Hey guys, what's cracking? We are back today with another episode of Team Building University. Today we are going to be looking at the stall team archetype. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, so about some just some information about stall. Uh, stall is all about stopping your opponent's momentum. You know, at every turn of the game, you're going to be trying to stop their momentum, and you're you're going to be trying and they're going to be trying to gain it back. Um, so every time your opponent tries to exert some pressure on you, your goal is to stop it and have safe switches and which kind of leads me to my next point, which is stall is a play style that's going to utilize a high number of switches and make safe defensive type plays. That means if a Pokemon that threatens yours out is on the field, um, a lot of offensive teams would choose to either sack a Pokemon or would choose to um, try and to take a risk and kill that Pokemon, something like that. But stall will generally, ideally a good stall team will have a switch in that will be able to take the hit, um, will not get to it KO'd, and will be able to recover. Um their health back from there so they're going to be using utilizing this to make defensive plays make the safest play and they will make the safest plays because the goal is to generally win by either pp stall rage quitting by your opponent or utilizing passive forms of damage and all three of these are best done when your entire team is safe and intact the more pokemon you can keep alive the easier it is to keep switching through the easier it is going to be to pp stall them um, the more frustrated they'll get and the more switches you'll be able to continue making forcing your opponent to hopefully make some switches that they shouldn't be making and that there you're, then you're going to be able to utilize past forms of damage such as status or hazards or chip damage um but all right so i want to go into elements of the team um but before i do that uh i want to kind of talk about what i'm going to be doing here i'm going to give you three pokemon um that are suggested but each type pokemon that i give you you're going to be able to if you'd like click on go check out some of my other team building university videos um as i go in oops sorry about that i go a lot more into depth about um each specific one in other videos specifically made for that type of role on the team um also another thing i want to talk about is i'm going to give you more than six roles and i'm definitely not going to tell you every single pokemon so if you want to know more about more types of pokemon you can definitely look at my other videos or you can try to get creative and try to make Pokemon um, that are going to fill roles in your team. I'm definitely giving you options here. There's going to be more than seven, po more than six Pokemon that I'm going to give you, uh, or six roles. So then you're, you have to get creative on how you want to combine those roles. Um, so from there, you know, it's going to be up to you. Um, but let's let's get right into it. So is that striked out? I don't know why that's striked out. What's up with that? Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Sorry, guys. Uh, a strong physically defensive Pokemon that's capable of taking on physical attackers that would threaten the team. Uh, so physical walls are going to switch into physical attackers. You get, hopefully get some recovery up. Um, hopefully be able to you know stop that Pokemon from doing too much damage. Um, generally they're going to be most offensive, the most effective against Pokemon that are like physical tank mons. A lot of physical walls will get overwhelmed by either physical wall breakers or f um, physical setup sweepers who can quickly become wall breaker type Pokemon. Um, yeah, so. Post some examples being Pokemon like Hippowdon, who's a very defensive Pokemon. Ferrothorn, who's a very defensive Pokemon, can utilize its Barbs and Skarmor, who has a great defensive type team typing, and it obviously is a great defense, physically defensive Pokemon. Um, on any counterpart to a physical wall, uh, you're gonna need a counterpart to a, as a special wall, and that's gonna be as very similarly a strong, specially defense Pokemon, capable of taking on special attackers that would threaten the team. Some good examples are Chansey, specially defensive Heatran, and Sylveon. Um, these are all three just fantastic special walls, uh, Chansey known for being able to take every single hit, most of the time, a lot of Pokemon's Focus Blast, um, doesn't to even 2 hit KO, some of them don't even 3 hit KO, um, especially if you're running fully spadef Chansey, so, uh, definitely pretty useful, um, so, one thing I really want to talk about though is that you're going to notice a lot of these Pokemon have very weak attacks, uh, Heatran can have some pretty strong attacks, Sylveon can have some pretty strong attacks, um, but you're really not, the goal isn't to attack much. Your goal is to just wear down your opponent. Um, and because of that, like, a lot of these Pokemon, like, Chansey's really only way of dealing damage is either Toxic Stall or Seismic Toss. So, neither of those is usually an ideal option um, as far as dealing damage. So, your priority is going to be really just annoying your opponent most of the time. Um, cl so, Claire, I don't know what these random strike throughs are about, guys. So, I hope, you th I hope that's not bothering you too much. Um... So, looking at Cleric, a Cleric is a Pokemon that's able to support a team by offering important roles, such as Wisp Passing, 
or status heal a status healing move. Um, so that's gonna be obviously wish passers. So they're gonna use wish and then switch out or moves such as aromatherapy or heal bell. These are Pokemon that all learn all both of these moves of some variety um, and all have their advantages. Chansey being obviously the bulkiest Pokemon probably in the tier. Um, Sylveon being a having a great spe amount of special bulk and Clefable having access to two fantastic abilities. Um, and of course, all as I said earlier, all three of them have both of these moves in their moveset. So use them accordingly. Um, hazard setters. Um, because passive forms of hazards like passive forms of damage like hazards can be so beneficial, a Pokemon with access to hazards is mandatory. The goal of stall is to not only make a lot of switches, but force a lot of switches. Um, not force, but just pr like make your opponent feel like the like, put them in a situation where the only thing they can do to beat you is switch. Um, and then wh what comes in handy there is going to be having some hazards up. So, one one like Stealth Rocks on Heatran, Spikes or Stealth Rocks on Ferrothorn, and again, Stealth Rock or Spikes on Skarmory. It's going to be very helpful. I should say, um, as you're going to see next in the next slide, actually, we'll talk about it there. Um, but uh, these are all Pokemon, of course, that can set up hazards on your opponent um, and can therefore be very beneficial and make them really punished for switches, especially on hyper-offensive teams that don't really utilize any defensive or like recovery options, either be it a recovery move or items like leftovers. Um, this is going to be a very you know, effective way of wearing their team down. Um, we have but Next, we have Hazard Clears. So this is a playstyle focusing... Because this playstyle focuses on defensive switches, you really... Um, want to be able to keep hazards off the field with moves such as Defog and Rapid Spin um, to allow for your switches to go unrestricted. What this unrestricted means is that a lot of Pokemon will get 2-hit KO'd by... Um, the difference between a 2-hit KO and a 3-hit KO can be Stealth Rocks a lot of the time, um, or Stealth Rocks plus Spikes. Uh, so... A lot of the time you don't, like, the difference between you getting off your recovery move on that offense, like, let's say you switch in your slow bro to a knockoff. I don't know if this is true, guys. I'm going to be honest. I don't know if what I'm saying is factual right now. But I'm just using an example. Let's say knockoff is a two-hit KO, uh, the three-hit KO on slow bro, but a two-hit KO after stealth rocks. And you, but, and slow bro is normally a safe switch into Conkeldur, but the opponent has rocks in the field. Um, if you switch in your slow bro into Conkeldur, um, and you have rocks, and it gets the two hit KO, and you aren't able to get your sleep uh, slack off up, then you just lost your slow bro to a Pokemon that slow bro would have otherwise been pretty much a counter to, um, especially after it lost your slow bro lost its item, no knockoff, not doing as much damage. Um, so that as that you can see on stall, a place how you're going to be making a lot of switches. You really want to keep your Pokemon healthy and allow them to keep switching as much as possible, um, and that's what's going to come with that is the need for hazards clear. So Pokemon like a defensive Fat Starmory can be as a defensive or especially defensive using recover. Pokemon like Tentacruel is very special defensive and Skarmory again who uses Defog. What I do want to stress about Skarmory and what I was going to say in the last slide is that. Skarmory being on both of these rolls means that you're going to really want to be wary about having both a hazard move and a hazard clearing move on the same set. Um, you know, just because, like, it doesn't make sense to have to have Skarmory set stealth rocks and then a turn or two later just clear the rocks for you, you know? Um, so, for that reason, I wouldn't stress using Skarmory as both of those rolls simultaneously. Um... Another option for you guys, um, this isn't as mandatory, but a defensive pivot can be useful. They can help scout switches, they can gain chip damage, and they can spread status. Um, so these Pokemon all learn some kind of status move and are commonly seen with a status move of some sort, um, be it Toxic, Will-O-Wisp, or uh, Thunder Wave. Um, and all three have something to gain from utilizing switches. Um, that being Slowbro has Regenerator, allowing to switch in, take a hit, T-Wave opponent, Scald an opponent, burn it or something, and switch back out and gain back a third of his health. Ferrothorn with Rocky Helmet and Iron Barbs can really do make a opponent lose like a quarter of its health every time it touches you, or something like that, some number like that-ish. Um, and of course, Rotom Wash has Volt Switch, which makes it a great defensive pivot Pokemon. Um, yeah, all these, all three of these Pokemon have the ability to switch in um, and utilize some various form of the switch mechanic uh, to really punish or just, you know, uh, gain some advantage on your opponent. Uh, we have a, I have a Pokemon that I'm calling a setup stopper. Um, this is gonna be Pokemon that I don't know what these weird <laughs> these weird dashes are, guys. I'm sorry. I hope this doesn't bother you guys too much. But while walls can be used for this role, um, which is as the role of to stop trying to stop a setup sweeper, Pokemon that can use phasing moves such as Roar, Whirlwind, or Dragon Tail, or have Unaware, can help stop a setup sweeper gone rampant. So this is gonna be a Pokemon. Let's say your opponent has a uh, let's say a Dragon Dance Mega Gyarados at plus two. Um, 
Although unaware wouldn't really help with that, would it? Because it's mold breaker. Okay, let me think of another example. Well, let's say your opponent has a Dragonite with those a weakness policy Dragonite. It's gone plus two point five or times two point five attack, times two special attack, times one point five speed or one point five speed. So this Dragonite is messing up your day. You're scared. You know, you're 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 terrified. Um, what do you do to stop a Dragonite or some po setup sweeper that's threatening your team? Uh, your answer is going to be unaware or phasing it out. Um, I think generally unaware is the better option and the more reliable option is a lot of phasers because phasing is such a low price is always a minus six move and will always go last. Your Pokemon a lot of times will be taking a ton of damage. Um, the only reason that Skarmory is really a reliable way to do this at all is because it has the bulk to roost up again. Um, from there, it, it, and its ability sturdy allows it to take a hit and then as long as, of course, Stealth Rocks isn't up, but it can take a hit and um, r guaranteed take one hit and use Whirlwind from there. But Quagsire and uh, Clefable are the two predominant unaware users, and they are able to use this move or use this ability to, you know, ignore the opponent's stat changes and hopefully take a hit. And hopefully it's not a 2 KO, and they can use moves like Toxic, like Moonblast, um, like Scald. Or something like that, and wear it down, or at least T wave it, maybe uh, get it weakened to a point where get it crippled to a point where somebody else can come in and revenge kill it. Although, again, the, the teams won't really be using revenge killing, so my point is just a way to stop the sweeper from doing its thing. Um, and this can, this is probably a very important part of stall as a playstyle, and that's why I'm going to recommend it. Uh, that's why you see Quagsires on a lot of hard stall teams. And Quagsire is really only seen in hard stall and OU. Like, that's the only time it ever gets OU usage. Look at that little hot dog tail. <laughs> um, another thing that can definitely be useful is a defensive mega. Um, while, like, defensive megas can fill in a diff various roles, but I think they can be a very part of it, a very good part and very helpful part of any mega stall core. Um, mega Venusaur is a crazy fat Pokemon with only two weaknesses. Um, and Mega Sableye is the same thing, very bulky Pokemon, with only one weakness, it being fairy type, very hard to take down, and they both have access to reliable recovery. Mega Sableye is basically the official king of stall, um, as a as an archetype. Magic Bounce makes it basically immune to all status, like essentially immune to status. Um So this thing is gonna really mess up your day. <laughs> um So Mega Venusaur though has a great ability in thick fat that allows it to also that allows it to neutralize two of its previous weaknesses and um you know it can it's got 120 120 defense i made a video on it so go check that out if you want um my, a lot of people don't consider mega altaria defensive pokemon and that's fair it's not super defensive but i have it here because mega altaria has a lot of good bulk and access to a pretty good support move pool um between roost and heal bell um and things like toxic you can definitely uh or even taunt to help fight opposing stall teams. I think Mega Altaria gets taunt. I might be lying about that actually. I might. Uh, maybe it doesn't. Um, but Mega Altaria is another option for defensive Mega. But uh, generally, when you're looking at defensive teams, um, you're really only be looking at either Mega Sableye or Mega Venusaur. Finally, I want to give you guys a team example. Um, this is a team that I made. I'm not give. I might give the importable in the description below. So be sure to check that out if you want to try using it. Um, I don't know yet. I have the team on showdown, but I decided to add it here in this form. Um, because I'm a really big hater of Mega Sableye, honestly, uh, and I find it very annoying to play against, I'm giving you guys an example of a Venutran stall team. Uh, Venus, Mega Venusaur Heatran is a very strong defensive core. Um, they just really synergize well. Uh, psychic and Flying type attacks, the co psychic, common Psychic and Flying type attacks in the tier are all attacks generally that Heatran, especially when Heatran, can switch into. And... Um, he trains weaknesses in fighting and ground are generally attacks that Venusaur can switch into. Um, and for this reason, Mega uh, Venusaur Heatran is a very strong defensive core. Although, in these days, this is a defensive core that struggles, and this team in general is really going to struggle with Mega Metacham, um, who is a very good st uh, stall breaker, wall breaker type Pokemon. Um, this team is also going to struggle with Pokemon like Manaphy, and a lot of defensive teams in general just struggle with wall breakers, because that's what wall breakers are here for, to bust up defensive cores. Um, but we've got a... And that's why a lot of people use Mega Sableye, actually, to be honest with you guys. 
Um, if you really wanted, you could replace Mega Sableye with Heatran. Oh, sorry, with uh, Venusaur. That's up to you. But we got a. I've got a Wish Toxic. It's a Wish Toxic Protect Seismic Toss Chansey. Um, one thing you really want to think about when you're making a, def a stall team is that you don't want any of your Pokemon to become bait to taunt. All Pokemon should have at least one type of offensive move. Otherwise, they're going to be easily forced. And you're going to be forced to either switch out um, or struggle. Uh, and those are never ideal options on a team where what if you don't want to do that. So never make your Pokemon complete stall um, taunt bait. Always give them some form of attack move. Like Venusaur can get Giga Drain, you can have Seismic Toss on Chansey, you can have uh, Lava Plume, you can have Brave Bird, you can have Moonblast, and you can have like Scald or EQ. Um, but we have, t this is a, I think like a Toxic Scald Recover Earthquake uh, Quagsire, but you could also restore and Protect on there if you wanted. Um, scout for moves. This is a Heal Bell, Moonblast, T-Wave, um, <sighs> something like that. Uh, Magic Guard, most important, the Clefable, that allows it to take hazards, and it also has Heal Bell to clear, you serve as a cleric for the team. Uh, this is an example, and then finally, actually, we have Skarmory as a Defogger, and it's, I have, I'm using a Shed Cell Skarmory, just because otherwise, uh, Magnazone and can really benefit a Spike Stacking team. Uh, Magnazone can switch in, and Skarmory being a lot of times the best way for a Spike, uh, most teams use Skarmory as a Defogger, if not Latios, and Magnazone can trap Skarmory, and that's pretty useful for a lot of spike stacking teams. So I'm running Shed Shell on it, although Leftovers is always an option as well. What you're going to see on this team is that a lot of Pokemon fulfill two roles at once, and that's really important um, on any team, is that while I say these are the roles that this Pokemon fills, a lot of Pokemon, because you only have six slots, you're going to need Pokemon to fill multiple roles. So on this team, uh, Venusaur serves as a physical wall and a strong Mega, strong defensive Mega. He trans serves as both a spe special wall and a Stealth Rock setter, um... Chansey serves as both a special wall and a wish passer. Quagsire serves as a setup stopper just because that's what it's good at. And also a physical wall and a pinch. Um, a lot of these Pokemon also actually serve as toxic stallers. Uh, I found that a very effective strategy in stall. Um, Clefable serves as a cleric and a uh, status absorber. And Skarmory serves as a... Um, whew, a setup stopper and a pinch with Whirlwind. Or as a... Uh, hazard clear along with a physical wall um so as you can see this team is pretty well rounded in my opinion um i really like it but it is weak to a lot of the stronger offensive teams of the ladder these days this was a team that was much better in xy to be honest and i really i when i was first getting into i started playing showdown in x and y and getting into competitive play um and this was one of the stall teams that i tried messing around with and it was very effective back then but I will acknowledge that it might not be quite as effective these days, um, now that Manaphy and Metacham are running rampant on the ladder. Uh, and I, I like that. I love Metacham, and I love Manaphy. Uh, I obviously love Manaphy. But, um, yeah, so I hope this video was helpful, guys. Um, put a lot of work into it, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I definitely hope it was helpful. That said, I'm just going to make you guys aware that if you're playing stall, a lot, just expect a lot of people on the ladder to get very angry at you, because... Um, I don't think it's a fair assessment that they say that stall requires no skill, but it is, I feel like, not a very fun playstyle, especially to play against, but also I feel like, personally, I stopped using stall. I tried it for a little bit, I laddered with a couple stall teams, and then for like just a few weeks once, and then I was like, you know, I'm really not enjoying this, just because it kind of, for me, and this is obviously a personal thing, it's like, you can you're all free, feel free to express your opinions in the comment section below, or whatever, how you, however you feel about stall, but for me, stall... It just doesn't feel as fun because it wasn't as offensive as there wasn't as much pressure in the battle. Um, you know, I like making plays. I like thinking. Um, stall felt like, to me, just a play style where all I was doing was switching and making my opponent angry. Of course, if that's your cup of tea, you do that. You rock it. Um, don't let anybody tell you not to. Anyways, yeah. So, as always, I really appreciate it. Like, comment, rate, subscribe. Thanks for checking out the video. Um, expect a another video tomorrow. Uh, it'll either be probably a CSL video if the... The semifinals against the Zwoops are about to happen, actually. But it might be that. It might be a Fire Red Random Nuzlocke, as I my current video actually got a little more uh, interaction. So I'm actually probably going to start putting some more effort into those, because I, I find that very exciting. I love uh, Nuzlocke, and I love Randomizers, and I love playthroughs, so I really have wanted to get into that for a while. So I'm glad that this one's getting some feedback. But all right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hope this was helpful. Kraken Nation, out.